What does it mean to live in an age of COVID-19 when our notion of intimacy has been challenged dramatically? Our smile is masked and our touch is no longer to be trusted. What does it mean to live in a digital landscape where our bodies are enmeshed in materiality of machines, sensors, and digital processes? Could we develop a form of sensuous correspondence or sense of touchless intimacy with the environment around us? In my work, I explore the relationship between the human body and the surrounding environment at a range of scales, from the intimacy of variables to architectural spaces. As someone who is fascinated by tactility, textures, and the movement of matter, I've been interested in how computational systems could be embedded into the substrate of matter, as though the materials could become a machine and the machine could become a material. If these computational systems could detect and respond to human emotions, we could develop an emotive machine. Or perhaps what I refer to as emotive matter. I'm referring to development of bio-inspired material systems that could interface with human emotions. I'm inspired by nature in terms of not only its complex morphology, but also its intelligence and behavior in responding to both internal and external stimuli. I'm interested in exploring the active, dynamic, and shape-changing properties of materials. I believe that in the process of creation, it is through the partnership with matter that forms should emerge and behaviors evolve. I'm interested in lifelike qualities of materials where they can sense and perform in harmony with the human body. But where is the boundaries of our bodies? Where do our bodies end and the environment begin? Is the boundaries of our bodies our biological skin? Inspired by the work of philosopher Andy Clark and his notion of extended mind, I have explored how we can expand our bodily perception by coupling with intelligent materials. One project where I explored this idea is Synapse, a neuromorphic 3D printed helmet whose movement is controlled by tracking device that monitors the attention level of the wearer through a kind of closed loop interaction. To my mind, the integration of emerging technologies into the environment should not be seen as an end itself, but as a mean of addressing psychosocial issues. This is reflected particularly in my work, Caress of the Gaze, a cape which responds to the onlooker's gaze. Not only is this a piece of technological innovation, but it also addresses broader gender-related questions such as male gaze on the female body. This project started with a question, what if our garment could recognize the gaze of the other and respond accordingly? So if you're the wearer, you would know which part of your body is being looked at, and if you're the onlooker, you would know that your gaze has been noticed. I would argue that materials augmented with computational systems could be incorporated in our social settings and influence our behaviors, social interactions, and even our perception. We perceive the world through our senses, but could we perceive the world through an alternative means if one of our senses were to fail? For example, could a blind person learn to see through a different organs? In 1960s, American neuroscientist Paul Bakirita proposed a concept of sensory substitution as a form of altered perception. He was able to demonstrate that blind people could learn to see by sensing vibration in their chair. As such, how might our clothing expand our sensory perception? And in what ways could our clothing become a form of nonverbal communication expressed through changes in color and texture? In the light of COVID-19, I would like to suggest that we need new ways of thinking about our bodies in the space of in-between in between machine and flesh, in between organic and artificial, in between agency and non-agency, where the existence of this interrelationship is no longer a luxury, but a necessity. From masks with microstructural resolution protecting our bodies from the virus, to computer vision devices helping us to monitor our health, to drone augmented with thermal camera detecting our body temperatures, to ways in which the body needs to be made more aware of its physical distancing. As we become more and more hybrid beings, there is an increasing need 
think about issues such as ethics, control, and governance. Our world is indeed already hybrid. We are all already in the space in between. But let's reflect on what possibilities might there be for the future.